Well, good morning, guys and ladies. It is March 5th, and I am down on the south end of Lake Talquin. And the main reason I came down here to the south end of Lake Talquin today is because we're supposed to get a south wind today, and by lunchtime, it's supposed to be blowing 12 miles an hour. And 12 miles an hour is a pretty stiff wind here in Florida. I'm sure it probably is anywhere. I'm sure some of you are used to higher winds than that, but that makes it pretty tough to fish. So, you know, some people always ask me what boat ramps I use and, and you know, why I decide to go where I decide to go. And I tell you, a lot of that decision boils down to wind direction. So before every trip, I watch the weather to see what the weather's like for the week, whether or not I think the fish are gonna be shallow or deep. And then I look at my charts and I find areas where I think I'm gonna be able to effectively do the most fishing during the day. And then I look for a boat ramp. Of course, I'm kind of familiar with the boat ramps around here, but I will, I will pick a boat ramp that is as close to where I, can, I wanna fish as I can put in without having to run the whole length of the lake that is gonna give me the most protection from the wind for the whole day so that I can fish effectively the whole day. I don't worry so much about exactly where I think the fish are gonna be because what I tend to find on most of these lakes is, is it really doesn't make a as big of a difference as to where I'm fishing in the lake. The lakes just, these lakes down here are just full of crappie. And there's crappie in just, just about every end of the lake. It really just depends on where you're gonna be able to fish the most effectively and be able to maximize your time and be able to get to the fish and fish for them effectively. So that's kind of a little insight on my thought process before I go to the lake every weekend. You know, I only get two days out of the week. If I'm lucky, I get to fish Saturday and Sunday to get out and try to find some crappie for you guys and get them caught. And man, do these crappie move around a lot. But today I'm down on the south end of Lake Talquin. We're gonna have a south wind today and that's gonna make this side of the lake more protective. There's uh, several coves down here that I can get in that the fish could go in and spawn. So we're gonna get down here today and we're gonna look around in these coves and see if we can locate some of these spawning fish. But before we do that, cause I don't know how many fish I'm gonna catch today. Guys, I struggle during the spawn. It is not my best time of the year. Um, I think the fishing's better in the, in the uh, post spawn and in the summertime in the winter time and especially in the fall of the year but we're going to get out here and track them down but before we do that we got a couple things to go over one is is that i call garmin you know some of you guys know that watch my channel that when they came out with the update 19.10 I, I had a really crystal clear unit didn't have any i had a little tiny blind spot at about 10 feet or so that really only stuck up about a foot or so off the bottom and you know it was uh, certainly fishable it didn't didn't affect my fishing much every now and then I might get a jig in the blind spot or or get a fish in the blind spot but when I went to using 12 foot poles a 12 foot pole puts my jig if I hold it out in front of my boat and drop it straight down it puts it right in that blind spot when I did that upgrade to 19.10 it made that blind spot four feet or higher tall and and messed up my clarity and ju just really did a job on my unit so i talked to garmin off and on for several weeks and uh honestly they weren't much help they gave me several things to try um if you guys haven't checked out garmin guru i watch his channel as well and uh he put out a video about having about how you can force an update and said that maybe some people may have had some issue with uh, Active Captain. Well, I did download my update in the garage using Active Captain. So just to be safe, I did a forced update and reapplied that 19.10 update. And you know, I can't say that it did any, made any difference for me. It may have helped a teeny tiny little bit. Didn't help my blind spot at all. But I called Garmin this week because I hadn't heard any. They haven't called me, they haven't offered any help other than just when I call them. So I called them this week 
I think it was on Tuesday night, Tuesday afternoon, and asked them if they had any updates at all on what they were trying to do to fix the issue with 19.10. Uh, and the guy told me that they had just released a new update, 19.20, that is supposed to help clear up some of the issues with 19.10 and prep your unit for the new LVS 34 transducer. So seeing how I didn't have anything to lose since I was already, already struggling, I, you know, I, I know I haven't shown you guys a lot of live scope footage. My live scope's been working pretty good for suspended fish, but when I was fishing up in the shallow water for spawning fish, most of the fish I'm catching are in my blind spot. I'm mostly using it to locate fish out in front of me and see what where the structure is around. I'm just kind of using it as a tool, but not so much to actually see the fish bite the jig. A lot of the fish I was catching, I wasn't seeing them bite the jig, especially this time of year when I'm up shallow and the fish are sitting on the bottom and that blind spot's even worse in shallow water. So, we're gonna get out here today, and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find some place that we can uh, turn this unit on. I applied that update. I didn't have anything to lose, so I went ahead and applied that update. I'm gonna be the guinea pig, and uh, also have one of those LVS 34s ordered, so when it comes in, we'll get a look at the new transducer and see how that works. But we're gonna get out here today, and one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with this live scope, see if this new update helped at all, and uh, then we're gonna get up here in the shallow water and see if we can find some fish. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is it's been a little while since I did a gear, gear review and I get a lot of people that ask me in the comments, people that call me and email me, asking about the gear I use and um, you know what I like, what I don't like. Well, let me show you guys, I, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm learning and I am always striving to find the jig heads and the line and the rods and the baits that 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 I want to use. I'm trying to hone it in on the things that I use day in and day out. You guys have already seen in my videos. You know, my favorite color is that pumpkin seed and chartreuse. That just seems to work everywhere I go. And not that they won't bite other colors. I you know I can catch them on pretty much any color I use. They they they'll bite all kind of colors. But that color just seems to work all the time now if i'm struggling and they're not biting it you know i'll try some other colors and i do i do have a few other colors but i tend to stick with more natural colors now this week i ordered a new rod so i've got currently i'm using i really like lose tackle i've been using lose tackle for many many years i love their bass tackle i've been using their bass tackle for years and years and years and i just love their the lose rods they just they're lightweight, they got the right stiffness, and I like a light rod. I don't like a big old heavy rod that's dragging me down and wearing my hand out. I like lightweight rods. So, you know, one of the things that I use a lot when I'm vertical jigging is this Wally Marshall Classic Signature Series in a 12 foot. And I just buy these little $30 Piscafun Viper X reels. They seem to do just fine for, for crappie fishing. And, you know, they're lightweight and they seem to, seem to, uh, do pretty good for me. I really hadn't had a problem and they're not expensive for crappie fishing and you know I'm not catching big old redfish or something that's really gonna test the drag or anything when I'm crappie fishing But this 12 foot Wally Marshall classic signature series this rod is a a medium light moderate action rod So it's a lightweight rod has a lot of bend in it, you know fairly soft tip But because of these graphite blanks, it still is pretty stiff and light um, so it doesn't sag on me and it's just a comfortable rod to fish with all day long and when I'm in open water this is what I'm going to use I don't need a super stiff rod I, you know I, I swing lighter weight fish but the big fish I just lift them up by the line I catch enough crappie that I'm not so worried about you know one one getting off the hook or falling off and honestly I just don't lose that many if I've got them hooked good they typically stay hooked and if I barely got one hooked I'll see him if he's when he's you know gets up next to the boat and you know sometimes I'll bend over and reach down and pick them up now I use 10 pound test braid on my rods and as you guys saw in some of my other videos I started out with uh, trilene spider wire and uh, in a translucent braid and I didn't like it guys it didn't cast worth a flip for me now I use some of their older braids 
the green color braids on my bass tackle and I like that green braid it works it works great it casts good I use it when I'm bass fishing especially when I'm flipping and stuff like that and never had a problem with it but something something about that translucent braid they made it just it's like sticky it, it really digs into itself really bad and just didn't cast very good for me so this year as you guys saw in some of my earlier videos I decided to try a whole bunch of different braids so right now I'm running um, suffix 832 and 10 pound i like white i like a white color it seems to it seems to disappear pretty good in the water i can see it okay um i haven't had any issues with it so i've just kind of stuck with the white uh, you know i'm sure i could use any other color but that's just kind of what i've decided to do i'm also running the uh, j braid um x is it j braid the h strand j braid i can't remember the na actual name of it and uh, it's kind of a grayish color. Let me show you that. That's it on my pitching reel. And this stuff, so far, it feels, I don't know, I have to go back and look to see what it's made out of, but it feels like silk. And that, guys, that stuff casts awesome. It just flies off the reel. I have been, so far, I've been very impressed with how good it casts. I haven't broken it a single time. I do see I have a nick or two in it, you know, because I hadn't cut any of it off in a while. And, you know, I get it in structure and stuff and drag it in and out of the boat. But so far, it's working really well. And I also use, um, I also have a reel spooled up with the uh, Daiwa X and X9. I think it was X9. And uh, it's also working really well. And it casts smooth and doesn't make a lot of noise in the guides and has also been a really good braid. Now the other rod that I, you guys see me using all the time is a Wally Marshall Classic Signature Series and a nine foot. Now this is my, with a cork candle, this is my pitching rod. This is what I use to pitch to fish. I like to underhand pitch. I just have a lot of control. Fish are usually, you know, I'm usually fishing within 40 foot of the boat. I can make a 40 foot underhand pitch very accurately right into my beam with no problem with just one quick motion. And that little, this little nine foot rod is super light, still got some stiffness to it. It's also a medium light, moderate rod. Now the one place where I don't like a, a moderate medium light rod is when I'm fishing in lily pads. You guys see me fish sometimes in treetops and lily pads and grass down here in Florida. So this week I got online and I went to lose and I bought a Pro Target, Wally Marshall Pro Target Lose Rod. This rod is a medium, what, what, what did they, how did they have it classified? A medium heavy action with a fast tip. So this one runs the stiffness, stiffness of the rod farther out towards the tip and gives it a little more backbone, a little more stiffness. It's a tiny bit heavier than my moderate, but it's still super, super light. And this is in a 12 foot and I'm gonna be you're gonna see me using this when I'm vertical jigging in lily pads and grass and places where I really got to stick those fish and drag them up out of the water now on my two 12 foot rods especially this one I spooled this up with the suffix 832 and the reason I did that was because this suffix 832 is actually a little bit thicker diameter than some of the other 10 pound tests I'm using and when I'm in that structure and that heavy cover it just seemed to me that, that thicker diameter was going to give me a little bit more abrasion resistance i don't know if that's true or not guys but that was a theory i had so that that's what i spooled this this medium heavy heavy rod up with but you guys will see me using this in some future videos this is the 12 footer it's a really nice feeling rod it's still still really light got some backbone to it so this this should turn out to be an awesome rod but we'll find out how sensitive it is to the feeling the bite but uh You'll see me using this in the future as well. Now, along with that, some people ask me what jig heads I use. And, and guys, let me tell you, I have been on a search to find jig heads I like. I have got tons and tons of jig heads at the house. I've bought custom made jig heads. I've gone through every kind of jig. I pick up, just everywhere I go, I pick up every kind of new jig head I've found. And I have settled on, in an eighth ounce jig head, the one that I have found that I like the most is called an Arky Pro Model Jig Head. You can see a little picture of it here. I don't know if that's focusing on that. 
but these jig heads have a one a size one sickle hook in them that the tip is not bent around so much it's got a little bit straighter tip i don't know what brand hook it is but these have been very good jig heads for me i i, I like a jig head that has a really big gap because i'm catching a lot of big crappie and what i find is is if i use a smaller hook more of those crappie pull off i, I can't keep them hooked as good i lose a lot more fish when I go to a smaller gap hook. And these Arky, these Arky Pro Model jig heads have a nice big hook. And guys, a lot of times I buy those just directly from Arky. And uh, a lot of the ones that I buy, they just, I just buy them in a, just an unpainted lead head color. Here's a, here's a little better picture of that gap and that hook, but you can see how high that hook sticks up and I'll take these hooks and I'll bend them up just a little bit so that that point is sticking a little more upward. Give them just a tiny bit of an upward bend. But I buy these things just in a lead color and what I do guys, and, and you know, this is probably not the best way to do it, but you know, just be simple and easy. I buy fingernail polish. I'll just go to the store and I'll get me some fingernail polish in the colors that I want to match my jig heads. And you can see here, I've got this jig head painted with a chartreuse bottom, and a, kind of a dark green head, and just some little eyes that I painted on it. And I just did that with fingernail polish. And I find that that holds up as long as I'm willing to use a jig head. Because, you know, I'll use it a trip or two, and it's going to dull. I'm going to bend it out. And, you know, once I've bent it out a few times and dulled it up, I'm not using it anymore anyway. And that that fingernail polish tends to work just fine and stay on there plenty long enough for me to do that so that's just a little trick for you guys if you want to paint up your own jig heads to match your jig color because guys i can't find a pumpkin seed and chartreuse colored jig head that's really hard to find so i just paint them up myself works just fine looks good fish don't seem to mind and that's what i do now when i start going up to 3 16 ounce heads in the winter time when i'm fishing deep now a lot of people just put split shots above their line I tried that. I get confused though a lot of times as to which, you know, I'll, I'll be seeing that split shot and think that's my jig. Cause a lot of times my jig is not showing up as good. So I just don't like doing that. I, I just like using just, just straight to a jig head. So I just use the weight jig head I need. I probably might catch a few more crappie if I was using a super light weight jig head with a split shot above it. but. This works for me, this is what I do. It's simple, it's easy to do, it's no problem. So that's that's what I do. But in those 3 16 ounce jig heads, I will also use a number one hook. Even in my 16 ounce jig heads, a lot of time I've got a number one hook. Those 3 16 I will also go to a one alt hook. So I use a big hook. You know, Crappie got a pretty, pretty good sized mouth, so I haven't had any problem using bigger hooks with bigger gaps. The only problem I run into is on some jigs, the body, if you get down to a smaller jig, I'm usually using two to two and a quarter to two and a half inch jig grubs. And those bigger hooks fit those just fine. But if you get down to little small jig heads, that's when you got to downsize in the hook a little bit, you know, cause that hook's just too big for the grub. So when I'm using like a, a two inch wicked shad, I can still get away with those Arky with the, the sickle bend that, that tends to put the hook shaft coming out of the jig a little sooner because of that bend. So I can get away with it on those. But a lot of times I may have to downsize in, in a, you know, like if I'm using a weedless jig, I might have to downsize to a, uh, you know, a number two hook. So I will do that occasionally. But guys, that's kind of, kind of the rundown of the tackle I'm using. I always tie a little piece of fluorocarbon line to the end of my braid. And I don't do that because I think the fish can see my line. You know, I, I tried using straight braid and I didn't have any problem. Fish, fish, didn't seem to bother the fish at all. The problem I had was that that small braid is so thin that almost every manufactured hook jig that I had, I could pull that braid out of the hook eye. A little gap, even if you couldn't even see a little gap, you could pull that line through it. That braid will flatten out so micro thin that it'll get through that that gap with a with a loop knot. So that's why I always have a piece of fluorocarbon tied on there because when I'm using that 10 pound fluorocarbon, it, I've never had a, a, 
I've never had my line pull out of the hook eye with that. So that's the main reason I do that. And I use 10 pound test because, you know, guys, I just lift the fish in the boat and swing them in the boat. And, you know, get a two and a half pound crappie. I don't want to lift him out of the water with anything less than 10 pound test because I feel like I'm going to break the line trying to get him up in the boat. And I accidentally catch big old catfish and bass and, you know, all kind of other fish as well. So that's kind of the setup. That's kind of why I go with that setup. And it's working well for me. I, you know, it's just my opinions the way I do it. You guys are welcome to do it any way you want to. I think there's a million ways to catch these fish. But it's a beautiful morning, guys. Let's get out here on the water. And let's get this day started. You guys hang with me and we'll see what we can find. All right, guys and ladies. Moment of truth. All right, I've turned it on. I haven't changed any settings yet. This is still with the previous settings that I had on here. And right off the bat, it looks, doesn't look too bad. Let's see, uh, there's a stump right there. Let's see if it disappears. Yeah, it disappeared. Well, I don't know if they changed anything or not. I can see a big blind spot right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I can see it right there. Big old blind spot. So right off the bat with my current settings, it, I think overall, it looks like I got a better picture. All right, so let's just drop a jig down here in front of the transducer so there it goes down uh, uh, uh oh it vanish on me yep put the bottom down a little bit so if we put that jig right here in front of the boat there it goes down can't see it, see it disappearing Still a pretty good blind spot. Barely see it coming in and out of that blind spot. So let's uh let's adjust this thing and see what we can do with it. So we're gonna go to sonar setup. We're gonna turn the noise reject off. Alright. We're gonna go to gain. We're going to turn that, well, let's do that from right here. Let's just turn that gain down just a hair. Now let's see what we got. And now we can see that jig. I can see it pretty good. That's right in my, right where it drops down. So look at there, there's a fish right in front of the boat. What kind of fish is that? And he vanished. Oh, look at there. He's going to come up and look at it, too. What is that? Brim? <laughs> All right, guys. Somebody's calling me. Hold on just a second. So with noise reject completely off, I can see that bait pretty good. Even in the, even in the ghost tree, I can see it a little bit. A lot better than I could. I would say it's a little better. So let's see if we can filter some of that out. 
let's go to menu sonar setup we're gonna leave leave most of that off let's go to uh, ghost reject let's put it on low medium high auto I can't tell that I did anything at all guys all right let's try the new settings let's go to first let's double check orientations forward so all that looks good let's go to appearance color gain let's, we got that on 75 let's put that on 70 All right, let's let's play with that new color limit. And let's see if we can filter it out a little bit with the color limit. So we're gonna go up on that color limit to I don't know, guys. I can't tell it's doing anything. us up I got us in some awfully shallow water let's see uh, I can still see my jig I can still see that fish down there so I mean it is definitely usable more so I think more so than it was there's a fish right there I don't think my blind spot is as bad guys I think it's a little better my picture's not as clear Unless I go to noise reject on high and then it puts my blind spot back. But that is definitely that is definitely gonna let me see my jig a little better. Let's try noise reject low. The low didn't do anything. Medium that created a blind spot looks like but it's closer to me yeah there is a blind spot there with that on you guys see that I know the glare is bad so we do have a blind spot a little bit not as bad though it's still there but it ain't, it's not I don't think it's as bad as it was guys I think maybe it did help a little bit See my bait. That's definitely usable. That's on medium. On high, clears the picture up. That's pretty good with noise rejecting on high. Right now, my blind spot is. I've got one, but really close to the boat. So you guys can see. See that jig? So at four feet, all the way to the surface, that jig disappears. You can't see it. So let's zoom the range out. Let's, let's get off of here. We're at 24 feet, so that's not too bad. So let's see. So that's pretty good. I can see that pretty good, guys. Let's see how close it gets before it disappears. So that's that's where my rod is naturally straight up and down right there at six feet so there's a blind spot see it vanish but it's higher up in the water column so now it's in my it, it, right at that beam it disappears so if I want it clear I'm gonna have a blind spot it looks like and I'll play with the settings all during the day, guys, today. And by the end of the day, I'll let you guys know what I found and uh, what we decided to stick with. So I'm ready to go find some fish, guys. Let's go see if we can find some fish. 
I use my live scope all day today. And uh, first thing, first thing this morning, it seemed like it was working a little bit better. But then as the day went on and I lifted up out of the water a couple of times, it got really bad. <laughs> it just went downhill. So uh, I ended up restoring all my defaults, and calibrating my compass again. And after I did that, it seemed to clear it back up a little bit. I will say, I think it's a little, maybe just a hair better than it was. I think it is a little bit of improvement when I can, you know, keep it dialed in. Um, it, 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 it gets the job done. I, I can see good enough to fish and I'm just glad to have something that uh, is, is, you know, doesn't have too big of a blind spot. It's still got some blind spots in it. They, they seem to have moved a little bit where the blind spots are, but luckily they're not right where my jig normally is, which is a good thing. Now, uh, the other thing you may notice is, is my spot lock on my trolling motor is driving me crazy, guys. I mean, it's all over the freaking place. So I've ordered a uh, GPS kit to put in the head of that thing. We're gonna see if that straightens out my spot lock, but it just, it just goes all over the places. <laughs> it can't figure out what's going on. But it was another beautiful day, guys. The wind blew a gale today and uh, the fish were tough to catch, but you know, hey, can only get out on the weekends you need to get out on the water and enjoy it while you can so guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the water next weekend